Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of TC Talk. Back today with another video. And in today's video, I think this is episode six of our How to Arachne series. And today I'm going to be going over my budget Arachne deck tech, kind of talking about a very cheap version of the hero that you can play that gives you a good idea of how the hero's like play patterns are and maybe some of the cool aesthetics of the hero while not having to spend what the normal deck list is is around five hundred and like eighty dollars for everything, like every bell and whistle. This deck list is forty bucks, and I promise you, you know, you may not win every game because it is a budget list. You need some of those power cards in there. However, you will get an understanding of how Arach Arachne plays and the basic play patterns, and get a good feeling of the aesthetic of the hero. I'm also at the bottom, which I'll talk about here in a second. In the maybe category, I put all of like the upgrades and stuff, so you can immediately go to them and see them see the prices, and we'll kind of talk about that as far as which cards to upgrade first and kind of go from there. So if you like this type of content, please leave a like, comment, or subscribe. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoy your stay. If you're a long-standing supporter, thank you so much as always. Feel free to check out the Patreon and the Discord down below. Feel free to check out the rest of the series over on the right on the How to Arachne series. Hopefully you enjoy it. Uh, hopefully you have been enjoying it this past month. Uh, and yeah, leave some comments down below. Any questions you have at the end of the video that I may have not covered, and I'll try my best to answer them. So Arachne has a lot of you know higher price cards. Um, there's a lot of like the assassin class in general isn't like a top top class, but a lot of the the cards are uh, pricey solely because like a lot of the big ticket items are legendaries as well as having some applicability in Yuziri who's also a very good assassin here right now you can check her out if you just like the assassin class in general but I tried to create replacements that served the same base function as the card it's replacing but there are some cards that just aren't replaceable and we talked about that in a prior video where I gave you power cards and their replacements like command and conquer there is no true replacement for command and conquer right flick knives what flick knives can do for you in certain situations there is no technical replacement however what you can replace is the block value it gives you right the one block so stuff like that so we'll kind of talk about that so we'll go into the equipment first. We'll start from the top down. So the one piece of equipment that you can get uh, that's very cheap is Mask of Perdition. So Mask of Perdition is like seven bucks, six bucks, I think. Um, let me just look at the pricing really fast. We're looking at two dollars. I'm sorry, I was even farther off. Two dollars, and this one's nice because it has the one block that you can recur with your silver. Gives you an idea of what it means to buy back uh, Arachne's equipment, so you at least get that feeling. And it's a really powerful card in those fatigue game plans. For the chest piece, normally this would be tunic. I put in Blossom of Spring. Um, Blossom of Spring's like pennies on the dollar. It basically gives you a one-time tunic activation, which is really really nice. Um, be able to gain that resource. You can't do it at instant speeds. So you're not going to be able to do it in the reaction step. So that kind of feels bad. Um, but overall, it's not too bad. You also could run just like another iron rot uh, breastplate here or iron rot uh, chestplate here in order to get um, more block value. Or if you want to shout a little more money, uh, normally this list is $40. You can go get Redback Shroud, which costs you about $17 right now. So it'll put the list up to 57 And this basically can potentially give you multiple tunic-like activations um, uh, during the game. So that's a really good option, but the cheapest option, I went with the cheapest one that still fills the role, which is Blossom of Spring. Um, really, really nice for that. Uh, for the arms, instead of Flick Knives or Shriek Razors, I have Iron Rock Gauntlet. This was actually what was ran when Arachne first was released because we didn't have an arm piece. It was either Iron Rock Gauntlet or you could run, if you have a two cost in your deck, uh, you can run a Goliath Gauntlet to make that a little bit more powerful. And then finally at the legs, instead of Black Tech Whispers, we are running Snapdragon Scalers. Because we have no two costs in this deck, because they're all power cards that you are going to get later, um, we can literally give anything go again in our uh, deck at least once. It, with the exception, actually, of Findle's Fighting Spirit. So the daggers stay the same, so that's really good. When it comes to the to the deck, I'll tell you what stays the same so you know you don't have to change those. Annihilate the Armed. You can get a play set of these for very, very cheap, right? A couple dollars. Um, cut to the Chases. Stay in the deck even after you upgrade. Your one of Death Touch will stay in the deck. Your Defense Reactions stay in the deck. Fate for Scene and Sync below. Um, what else? Uh, I have Eradicate in here, so I actually have one of your power cards. A play set of these is only going to run you about, let's see here... Eradicate's going to run you about $8 for a playset. Not too bad. Um, it's the cheapest of all the power cards. 
Um, slay the scholars, plunder the poor, all those stay in. Rob the rich normally is only run at blue, but I have it at red. And then finally your shreds, right? Those are stuff that will even stay in the deck even when you upgrade it. What is in the deck that's different, that's kind of a budget version, is just good power contract cards, right? Like a one for five Rob the Rich, really, really nice, right? Some of your zero for four contracts that, yes, don't have a, a higher chance of get, generating silver like some of your other cards, but they're zero for four, and they banish the top card of the deck. So cards like Fleece the Frail, really, really good. Um, Sack the Shifty. Uh, all zero for four contract cards. We put stuff like Sigil in here just for a little bit of life gain. Um, and then we have cards like Nimbleism because Nimbleism can help buff. Like you know, even on a power play, you can activate Blossom of Spring to gain a resource, play Nimbleism, and then play Annihilate the Arn for eight, right? Really, really good. Um, and then finally for your higher price, higher cost cards, I put Fandle's Fighting Spirit in here because I think it's good. It's a three for seven that heals you if you attack or defend with it when you're lower than life. Um, it's able to <coughs> pop Jeremiah's Dragon. It's able to pop even Prism's Herald of Triumph. Really, really good, flexible, six-plus power card. You could run this at yellows as well if you wanted to, but I have that in the deck. So the key core mechanic of this deck doesn't change as it does in its most powerful state, which is playing contract cards, manipulating the top of your opponent's deck, and then being able to potentially banish and create silver. The good thing about this budget version is you don't need as much silver like consistently because the only thing you're really buying back is Mask of Perdition. So because of that, you don't have to generate all this silver to buy back all this stuff. It really is just Mask of Perdition. Um, when it comes to the sideboard, I have a couple things in here that are good inclusions that are cheap. Frailty traps are really good into uh, ninjas to turn off their Kadachis. It's good into Azalea. Uh, if she plays a Bolt and Shot, uh, it gives it minus one um, and is able to potentially fully block it out, as well as if they try to put something else in Arsenal, it, that gets minus one. Um, really, really good for that. Oasis or Spite really good for Bravo, uh, good for Azalea. Uh, Razor Reflex is good in the, in the aggro matchups if you want to side that in just to try to give you a little bit more go again potential. Uh, red Shreds, and able to get around decks that have a lot of defense reactions. And then Unmovable, also really good into uh, decks like Dorinthia, Bravo, um, heck, even uh, Prism, um, really good for that. And then we have one piece of Null Rune in here for our Rune Blades. We're not teching for Kano in this list. And then finally, Scale Peeler for the decks that have really good equipment. So that's what the deck is. It's $40, right? So some pieces might be the history pack. I doubt it. Um, but really you can see the deck price here and you can click on all these. It'll go TCG player and let you buy it immediately. The most expensive thing in your deck is eradicate, which is two ninety five a card. Every other card in this deck currently right now is under a dollar a piece with the exception of fate for scene is a dollar now, which is actually insane. Um, nerve scalpel is two thirty five, and mass per edition is one ninety nine, right? When it comes to some of your maybe cards, these are your upgrades, and we'll talk about this in the next video when we go through the full deck list. But if you ask me, like, okay, Dylan, I bought this $40 deck. What's the first thing I buy? Personally, the first thing you buy, in my opinion, is Tunic. It's $70, but it's going to be able to service you so much in this deck. It's also going to be good in every other deck you play. You, you, If you want to play this game long term, right now you want Tunic because it's just good, right? You want to own one. Um for Arachne specifically, after Tunic, the next two cards I suggest buying are Surgical Extraction and Leave No Witness. Uh, Leave No Witness, a place that's going to cost you about $27 in today's market, December 2023. Surgical Extraction is going to cost you about $54, $51 with tax, probably like $54 for a play set. So a play set of these and a play set of these, you're looking at about $80 some dollars basically for the whole play set. So double the price of your current deck. I know it's expensive, but if you wanted to ask me which ones you should buy, definitely buy those. Your next one is Codex of Frailty. For, specifically for Arachne, I would buy Codex of Frailty. Very, very good card. Very powerful card. A place that these is about $150. Um, really Coercive Tendency might actually be one of the top ones even before Codex once it comes out. I think this card will end up being... I don't have a price for this card yet, but I'm assuming it's going to be like 20 bucks a pop. So probably a place that will cost about 60 um, And then you your equipment, I would buy last personally because it's really nice and it does help you with that recurring block, but I think those power cards are better. Like Black Tech Whispers, you can run Snapdragon Scalers and it'll be just as fine. Um, Flick Knives, also a really good card, but it's not going to kill you if you have Iron Rot. Uh, Tunic is really the really irre irreplaceable one. Um, 
Red bag shroud is something you can buy if you don't want to shell out for a tunic first. Buy shroud at seventeen bucks, um, <clears throat> and then slowly a cure from there. But yeah, if you had to maybe give you a top three, I would say tunic is your first buy. Your next buy is your place that's a leave no witnesses in surgical extraction, and then finally your next buy is coax of frailty. Command and Conquer technically should be behind Tunic in terms of power, but it's two hundred and twenty dollars for a playset. If you're wanting to play a Rachne, Command and Conquer is very, 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 very good. But if you're wanting to just play a Rachne, I wouldn't shell like you literally can buy if you take out Codex almost all of the rest of the cards for the price of a playset of Command and Conquers. So you know, Command and Conquer literally in a fully built out. Uh, Deck list is half of the price, right? I mean, if I even just really quickly go to my decks and go to link only, go to course of contracts, go to my prices of the deck, the price of a full deck right now is about $800. However, I have a couple pieces in here that are a little bit more expensive. As you see, Command & Conquer is $219. Already deads are at 102 which is ridiculous. This is the one card you don't have to buy. Make this last. This is the last card you buy for Arachne. It's very, very good. Out of all these cards, I would buy every card in this section right here before I'd buy Already Dead. Um, and then, like, Black Tick Whispers are 43. Flick Knives are 21. Um, down and Dirties are 42. You don't need Down and Dirty, so Down and Dirty could even go down from this list. But we'll talk about that in a later video. These are your maybe cards. These are your upgrades. Definitely take a look at these. But... Again, this is a great starting point. About Literally, you get about 70% of your deck with this, like your final deck, with this budget list. So definitely a good place to start. Play it on Talishar. Might not work out the best but it's because you're going to be playing against really powerful decks. But if you want to play this with a buddy on Talishar, like you play this deck and they play another pre-constructed or a budget deck list, just to get an idea for how the heroes work, definitely try it out. Don't get discouraged if you're losing right off the bat. Like The purpose is to learn the like the mechanics of the hero. I'll link this in the description below. Let me know what you think. If you're a long-staying player and you think you have a better option for some of these, definitely let me know. Um, put it in the comments below. Give new players other options. Be really good. This is just like my initial crack at a budget list. Um, but if you like this type of content, please leave a like, comment, or subscribe. If not me, it's totally fine. Go to our Flesh and Mud Creator, leave a like, comment, subscribe on their stuff so we can get more people seeing this game. And I'll see you all next time on TC Talk. Thank you all so much.